page A17. Helen, we're on the front page of the New York Times. <laughs> oh man, there's a picture of us too. Look at that. I wonder who took that picture. Send it to the camera. With canine sex and hooters. Papers jab at academic journals. I've been getting a lot of messages today that the New York Times is a white supremacist sexist organization. So I think... <laughs> I think they came down in our favor. <laughs> It's hard to make sense of what the hell is going on here. We've what? been talking for, what, months now about this moment and there was an expectation that we'd be utterly destroyed. For a good reason. Look what happened to Brett and Heather. But uh, that hasn't happened to us. It hasn't what's happened ha to what's us. What's happening? Can you... No, I can't. I have no idea what's happening. You know, something is happening. I don't know. And something might still happen. But, yeah, at the, at the moment, we've, we're, we're being taken seriously mostly and 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 read in good faith that, and that's surprising I very mean, that's very surprising that's there there are hundreds of thousands of words to read through to even begin to understand what we did uh, simplifying this into a book would even be difficult because it's so long usually you have to talk about ginning something up to book length but summarizing this down to book length is difficult so there's a great deal that people are going to have to take in do you think this thing could fizzle out as a result of people not properly understanding what is going on behind yeah, closed doors here? Yeah, if people don't understand that this is a form of corruption that's, that's political in nature, that's trying to change how we validate ideas. Uh, Brett Weinstein called it idea laundering, which is a brilliant term, that you have these, these prejudices and opinions. Our work shows that, that you can start with the conclusion and work your way there so you can conclude nearly anything as long as it's hostile to the right things, privilege in particular. And so then, then the university, or the, these grievance studies fields, take them in. They do the peer review thing, obviously in a way that's very concerning from our work, and then they put them out, and now they have this respectability of knowledge when they still are just prejudice and opinion. Critical race theory is a mess, for example. It is an explicitly political situation in which whiteness has to be bad and therefore it can't ever do anything right. And they, they take these ideas and launder them through the academic process. And these departments exist specifically to launder these ideas, to put them through the academic process and give them the appearance of being rigorous studies. So then activists can go out and say, oh, a study has shown these ideas disseminate straight out of the university into culture. They're everywhere. People run into them all the time. Everybody's confused about issues of, of race and sec racism and sexism now because they seem to have been redefined. And this whole power structure is becoming the, the water we, we swim in. And this whole thing that everybody and everything is racist and sexist would never have been able to take off and get much traction if it weren't being made to look legitimate by a scholarly enterprise that's been pushing it for five decades. It's about knowledge. It's about how we decide what is true. People don't tend to think about the ways in which they decide what is true. It just seems to come naturally to them because it comes from the water that we swim in. And we're just gradually, bit by bit, undermining the long history of, of going with evidence, of going with consistent liberal ethics. It's, it's frightening. Mm -hmm.